Hello, my friends. So, recently I have been doing a lot of couponing and I think I finally have um, a pretty decent sized drugstore haul for you guys. I've gotten a lot of stuff. Some I've loved, some I haven't loved, some I'm still confused about and I'm probably gonna keep trying. So just wanted to let you guys know and kind of give you an overall view of what I have so far and obviously there's always more stuff on my list. So here we go. So we will go with, I guess, the order that you put stuff on your face. And the first thing I wanna talk about is this NYX Pore Filling Primer. I have a really interesting relationship with this primer. It is one, like, okay, it works. It really, really works. So it's a really weird consistency. If you can like see that, it, it's like whipped. And then I'll show it to you on my hand, just so you can like, okay. My hand obviously has pores all over it. Everybody's does. So when you blend it in, it's just like, it's gone. And then all of a sudden there's just, there's no pores. And it's so soft and you, you can't even feel that it was ever there. It's not like a thick silicone-y primer that a lot of people really don't like. I'm not a huge fan, but you, you can't even feel that it was ever there. It makes everything so smooth and so blurred. However, the first time that I used this, I was fine. Nothing happened. The second time that I used it, I had a crazy reaction to it. It like, I had small texturized bumps all down this part of my face over here, only on this side. Not really on this side, so maybe I, I put more on this side. My nose was fine, even though I have pores all over my nose, so I put it all over my nose. And it was the second time I used it, not the first. And I used it with my L'Oreal Pro Glow Foundation, which I use most days. That's kind of my like go-to every day, just a regular workday foundation. And I was, I don't know, I just, in my face was itchy and like it wasn't really red, it was just texturized and really itchy and it was strange. And it took like one or two days to clear up. Um, I actually used my Ultra Bland to clear it up just because this is for sensitive skin. So I just kind of only washed my face with Ultra Bland. No toning, no anything else, no moisturizing, just this. Didn't wear foundation for two days um, and it cleared up right away. All the texture is gone, my skin's back to normal, but I just thought that was, really weird. I don't know. I might give it another go with a different foundation. Maybe they reacted. I also don't have any known allergies to makeup or anything like that. I, I've never had a reaction to anything before. So that was weird, but it worked great. <laughs> my makeup stayed. It was perfect. It filled my pores. Um, going off of that. So when that happened, I was like, oh no, like I wanted a pore filling primer because I was out of my rather expensive Smashbox one. So I went to my go-to cheapo brand for when I'm broke and that's Wet n Wild. And I liked this one too. It worked as well. It's not that like weird, like disappearing texture. And you, you do need a lot of this to like make it work here. Let me find some pores on my hand. So it's kind of white and then it blends out to be smooth, which is cool. Um, and then it'll dry down and totally fills your pores. This is fine. I'm pretty sure it was like $3. You do need a lot more of it. Like this, you need literally none of. Like this bottle will last you forever. Whereas this, like I'm probably gonna have to buy a new one of these in like two or three weeks, which is fine. It was cheaper than this one by like five bucks. So in the end, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, the ingredients, I did look up the ingredients. They are almost the same. There's a couple different ingredients, obviously because the formulas are a little like, the, like literally they're different. Like this one is like a whipped moussey beige texture. This one's a white, almost more silicone-y one. So we'll kind of go from there. Um, also, I don't know if you can hear that, but you can like hear the primer shake in this one. Like it's almost like one solid goop and it's like do 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 in the tube. Whereas this one, it just sounds like lotion, like a lotion tube. So I, don't know. I thought that was really interesting, but they both work. I just had a reaction to one of them. Nobody else I know, I've asked around had a reaction to the next one, so I, I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Foundation. The Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation is a super, super hyped up drugstore product right now. Um, I really like it. My only complaint is A, it doesn't have a pump, so you have to use this like, let me like wipe it off so it doesn't get all over me, this flat paddle applicator. 
which is fine. I like pile it out onto my hand and then I'll go in with my beauty blender and bounce it away. This shade is, I think it's Buff Bisque. It's a little dark for me um, just because I'm so pale right now, but I'm sure once I'm outside for like more than an hour at a time um, when it's not winter anymore, this shade will be perfectly fine. So I'm wearing it today. It's a little dark for me. I kind of had to do a lot of blending out with this one, but I really like it. I've been wearing it for a little bit now and I'm gonna keep testing it out. Maybe you might put it on hold until I'm a little less pale, but we will go from there. My only complaint besides the no pump is it smells like paint. Like it smells like that poster paint you used when you were a kid. I can get past it. It was $5 or $6. Why do I drop something in every video? <laughs> okay. Uh, next, this is a Jam Beauty 89, maybe buy it, 100% recommendation. I never would have even looked at this, especially because I have dry skin. Uh, this is the Rimmel Stay Matte Long Lasting Pressed Powder. Um, it's like not a foundation. I, some people, I don't know if some people use it as foundation. I use it as a pressed powder to kind of set my face almost like. it. It's a weird packaging. Um, it just, the lid just pops off and then it's got the little Rimmel crown that's in all their stuff. And then this is in the shade Buff Beige, which seems a little light for me. Um, but right now it just looks light because I'm wearing this crazy dark foundation. Oops. But it really does match like if I blend it in. Um, great for setting your makeup, especially if you're an oily skin person. I don't have oily skin. I have dry skin, but my T-zone is super oily. And like this little part of my chin, I don't highlight this. Like that's just my nasty oils of my face. So when I'm done with my makeup, I'll kind of do one of these with a brush and like blend it in so that it really soaks up all of the excess oil. Um, then I don't have a new drugstore concealer. My go-to drugstore concealer is my Maybelline Age Rewind. Um, I just tested out the, uh, I think it's the Maybelline True Match Concealer. I hated it, it sucked. <sighs> Still on the hunt. I'm probably gonna go for the Maybelline Fit Me next time I need a new concealer, because I heard that one's great. Um, but to bake underneath my eyes, because my dark circles are, <laughs> they're like craters, they're not even dark circles. It looks like someone scooped out my eye, like, I don't even know. They're just so black no matter what I do, no matter how much sleep I get. They're just there. So I do bake under my eyes and I used to use the NYC Loose Setting Powder, but that stuff makes a freaking mess. Yeah, the container is huge. Yes, it's only $3, but I can't find it anywhere anymore. They have stopped selling NYC at almost every Target and Walmart I have been to. So I would rather buy something that doesn't make a mess, travels a lot easier, container isn't huge, and is easily accessible. So I went for the NYX HD Finishing Powder in Banana. I went for the pressed one. There's a loose one if you're a big loose powder person, but I'm, I'm over loose powders. There we go. It's, it's yellow. Like, this is bright yellow but when you bake with it and you kind of like flick it away, it really brightens up your under eyes a lot if you are like me and you have crater face. So I like it, big fan. The next one I have to talk about is two different blushes. Well, they're from the same line. They're just my two favorite colors. And these are the Milani baked blushes. I have Luminoso and Rosa Ordo. That's a tongue twister. Luminoso is shade five and Rose is shade two. They are both, they have like glitter. I don't wanna say glitter because glitter is a scary word. They have shimmery veining in them that makes them not look super shimmery from the back. When you put them on, they give you like a nice glow. Um, I will say, ugh, there goes, okay, they, they come with this like terrible brush that you're never ever gonna use ever. So I forgot to take them out and they do flip up. So if you need to keep, I don't even know what you would keep in here, but if you had to keep something in here like that terrible brush, you could, whoop. Um, the packaging is super cute in that way. This Luminoso one is more glittery than my Rose one. I will swatch both of them for you. So this is like what it looks like on my finger. It looks kind of dark on your finger. But then because of kind of like the shimmer, Amanda drops more things in the video, part 1000. Yep, it's fine. And then this one is Luminoso. It's kind of more of your traditional pink. I always swatch on the inside of my arm instead of the outside, and then you like can't see. Um, yeah, so that's 
rose and that's luminoso so as you can see one is a little darker than the other but when you blend them out they both blend out to be super nice i believe i'm wearing luminoso today i don't a hundred percent remember but i think so <laughs> it's been a long day guys it, it is the end of the day right now okay next this is gonna be really random like you i don't even know how i I decided this needed to be in this video, but I love it currently, so we're going to put it in the video. And it is the e.l.f. Makeup Removing Pen. Pen? Yeah, it's a pen. So, this thing rocks. It is the only reason I can successfully wing my eyeliner. Um, I don't have wings on today, and I don't really feel like putting wings on, but let me just show you. I'm going to take this eyeliner and... Okay, so say this is the wing that I'm, I'm going to go for. Oh no, it's too thick. What am I going to do? I'm going to take this and just thin it right out. The only thing about these is that you do need to take a makeup wipe. Ignore this, I was wiping off swatches. Um, a makeup wipe and wipe off the tip afterwards. Otherwise, the makeup will kind of stain the tip. I didn't really know that at first so mine's a little stained but it works wonders for when you are trying to wing your eyeliner if you are a terrible winger like myself i am incapable of winging my eyeliner without messing up at least one eye especially i have hooded eyes so that makes it even harder to line them up and i refuse to put tape on my face because i don't have time for that we're lucky if my eyeliner gets on in the first place in the morning um Next, we can go into some more eye stuff. So this Milani eyeshadow primer is wonderful. It's great. I would say pretty close dupe for the Urban Decay Primer Potion. I also have the Kat Von D one. This is nothing like the Kat Von D one. The Kat Von D one is nothing like anything I've ever tried. Uh, reviews to come on that, but it's pretty sheer and then it just totally like blends out just like the Urban Decay one does when you start to kind of push on it and blend it in. Works great. Way, way cheaper than the Urban Decay one. This is uh, under $10. Urban Decay is 20 Keep that in mind. Uh, next, I don't have any eyeshadows that I want to talk about because I basically just use palettes all the time. Um, I'm not a really big single shadow kind of gal. I think that they're a pain in the butt to store, so I'd rather spend my money on a palette. Um, my only single shadows that I do have are in my Z palette, so I made my own palette basically because I'm a palette junkie. It's fine. Um, but I've been trying to duplicate my, <clears throat> my Urban Decay 24-hour liquid liner for a while. I don't like the brush that it comes with. It's one of these little like hairy brushes. It's like super thin though, so that's kind of nice. But I don't love these. I prefer like a felt tip marker brush, just because I think it's easier. But this is the blackest eyeliner I've ever used and it stays on super, super great. Everyone says that this and the Jessie's Girl are like similar in like staying power and formula along with the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner. The Jessie's Girl is great, but it dries out really fast, just like the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner. But it does have this super thin felt tip pencil, pen rather. So I wanted to find something else that didn't dry out as fast. Because yeah, this is only $5, but I don't like to buy things all the time. I don't like to have to go to the store because I'm constantly out of eyeliner. So I found this Rimmel Scandalize eyeliner uh, marker. Love it. Super, super, super black. And it doesn't dry out. I do always make sure to store all of my felt tip liners like pointy side down in a cup so that it doesn't it all can trickle. I actually learned that from Stephanie Nicole who said that her Kat Von D tattoo liner and trooper dried out because she was storing it flat and that actually happened my first Jessie's Girl one so now I have learned my lesson. Only store my eyeliners in a cup like this. Um, next, I, my brows and I, we have a tough relationship. A very tough relationship because they're pretty naturally full but I don't love them. I have a hard time being friends with them especially because half the time 
where'd they go? You can't see them because my glasses are huge. But I do like to give them a little bit of shape and I really do like this um, Rimmel brow this way, clear brow gel, just because my eyebrows don't need a ton of filling in and you often can't see them so I don't put like crazy effort into them when I have other parts of my face I could be worrying about. So it just has this nice like mascara wand looking um, applicator. It's just a tube of clear brow gel. It was really cheap. It was like five bucks. It works just as good as like, I think I had an Anastasia one and I got like a sample of ones. It worked just as good even though it's a pretty small tube. Uh, I don't use brow gel like sliding it all over my face and slapping it on so this tube will probably last me a decent while. It works great for me. Next uh, in the eyebrow lash area is we're, we're back to it. We're back to one of the mascaras that I think I used in high school or something like that and it is the CoverGirl Lash Blast. There's actually currently a coupon on Target Cartwheel for three dollars off of this making it like three dollars so you should go get it it's actually one of the cheaper drugstore mascaras i love the brush on this Let's see how close i can get oh it focused that's new it comes with like a cap on this part and the brush separately so when you take the brush out it's not all full of goop i hate when the brushes are full of goop it's so annoying so this is a big favorite i'm not wearing it today because i'm not wearing any mascara but um I have really, really like sticky outy straight lashes and this really pulls them apart and gives them a nice volume and a nice curl and it really holds my curl. So it is ideal for someone like me who has really, really small lashes that you can still see because they're brown, but even when, even when I'm wearing my glasses, you can really tell when I have mascara on because they're like va va voom. And my final product. Ugh. I have a lot of colors of these. These are just the ones that I happen to have in front of me. And these are the NYX Butter Lipsticks. I have the color. This one came in my Ipsy bag, so I actually don't know what the color is. This is the color Lifeguard. And I got this through Ipsy, so I didn't get this from the drugstore, but I bought these other two from the drugstore, so I'll just show you the color. It's like a dark, whiny red. And it's gorgeous. And then I have what I call my perfect nude. I'm wearing it on my lips today. You really can't, like, you can tell that I'm wearing lipstick, but it's not like, oh, she's wearing lipstick. It's like, oh, her lips look nice. And that is, oh, that's the number. What's the name? Really? It really doesn't say the name on here? Lamo. Oh, Root Beer Float. It says it in the weirdest place ever. And I love this shade. I wear it, <laughs> I wear it most days. If I'm not trying to like go for a look and I just wanna like tie my look together, I wear Rip Your Float. And the last shade I have is Boardwalk Pomade. And this is a like corally nude. It's pretty light for my lips just cause my lips do have a darker natural tint but I really like it. So these are the shades. Let me see how close I can get. I'll try and block out the light. Yeah, I really like these. This one, Root Beer Float, is my favorite. It looks not that similar to how the packaging looks. The packaging looks more brown, but it actually comes out, as you can see, a little bit more pink. Uh, but the rest of them are pretty true to color. I would say this one is a little more like berry than wine and the package looks very like wine tone so buyer beware i guess maybe uh these do come in plastic so you can't swatch them but like if you're at like an ulta or something they usually have like the front one is the sample so maybe swatch the sample so you can see if it's true to color but these are like four to six dollars depending on where you buy them i'm obsessed with them they're so so soft they don't dry out my lips they they're literally butter they're called butter lipsticks for a reason like I've had this on all day and it looks like I just put it on and it really doesn't wear away like I've eaten I've drank I had a sandwich I mean yeah like when I ate sandwich I got like transfer on my chin because I was like biting into my sandwich for lunch but like honestly I have not reapplied this since I put it on this morning because I was like out and about doing like living my life like you're supposed to not worrying about your stinking lipstick and it worked great these are a great buy, especially for how cheap they are. 
to be honest, this is almost the exact shade I have in one of my MAC satin lipsticks. And I think that I prefer this one. Maybe because it was $15 cheaper and I'm a cheapskate. But I'm probably going to buy every color of these except for the black one. Because I already have a black lipstick and your girl doesn't need any more black lipstick. So thanks guys, I hope you really liked this video. If you like it and want me to do some more hauls or favorites, let me know. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.